Greetings, groovy people! Welcome to my channel. I'm the self-proclaimed Blue Dragon, bringing you this week's time lapse, The Whimper in the Dark. Uh, I'll be sketching and inking a few pages for my long abandoned comic. It's been over a year since I've touched it, The Whimper in the Dark. Or wind, as I like to call it, because I'm lazy. I mean, that's not any worse than calling Paul McCartney Mac. I mean, yeah, in my opinion, but it is just an opinion. Before I start the video, though, it's apology time! Wow! I should, like, come up with a little theme song for that. No, I shouldn't. Friday's video! Last week, the 4th. It was ready, it was done. Should've posted it. Not for want of trying, though. I, I tried to upload it, like... 10 times, actually more than 10 times, at 30 minutes a pop before it would abandon processing at 94% each time. I'm not sure what was going on. I tried it on two separate computers thinking maybe it was a space issue, but no, it did not work. So I am going to work on retooling it and trying to figure out what, what the heck is wrong with it. I don't know if it's my fault or YouTube's fault or what, but after so many tries, I finally had to say F it because it wasn't downloading and the definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting a different result 12 times <laughs> okay well maybe not 12 times <laughs> so uh yeah and even saturday nothing changed so i'm trying to figure out the problem though i apologize for that it is coming i'm coming up with a plan for fixing the friday night videos too um, suggestions are always welcome. If there's something you want to hear me talk about or see, please let me know below. Because, I mean, if I'm boring myself, I can't imagine who I'm boring out there. <laughs> you know? But speaking of being bored, hey, don't forget to sub, like, and <laughs> hit the notification bell for more videos to keep track of whether or not that improves. Hey, that's a really bad plug. What a bad time to plug yourself. That didn't come out right. My videos aren't for kids. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly because I, I funke most of my stuff. Tobias and then whatever. Anyway, 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 on to the video. What is all this then? What the, what the heck am I talking about? Why am I doing this? This channel is about mostly my comics and art stuff, obviously, and the comic I'm working on, Wind, it's my attempt at a combination cute, um, maybe kind of comical, but not really, more macabre, com you know, comical in that weird British sense, but not really British because I'm not British and I probably don't have that right, that right you know, comedy flair to me. And also, you know, Word of Wednesday lurid horror comic starring our dogs, my partner and my, is that how you say that? <laughs> my dogs, Jack and Julius. It actually kind of started as a little joke because my dog, Jules, is, he's the Boston Terrier and he is just a silly goofball. He's, oh my God, the sounds, the faces, the noises this dog makes, hilarious. And then we've got on the other end of the spectrum, almost like a Laurel and Hardy thing going on where like Jack is the straight man. He's so dead serious and stoic. And like when he looks in you, his eyes bore into your soul and he's so serious. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a little bundle of nerves. So we were joking around about how he's probably like that because in reality he's an ageless guardian of humankind and is constantly at psychic war with unknown Lovecraftian entities and horrors and we're just the stupid humans who feed and water him and take him outside and nobody, you know, we're, we don't matter. He's the one protecting the universe. <laughs> And then we thought, wow, that's pretty epic. Wouldn't it be fun to, like, come up with some little scenarios? Like, we, we were sitting throwing ideas, like, telling little stories to each other about what all Jack was doing and how Julius was constantly needing to be saved because he's such a... <laughs> he's such an airhead. And, uh, we're like, hey, why don't we, like, draw some story? You want to draw some little pictures? You know, I was just kind of scribbling. And we were like, this would be kind of a cute comic idea, wouldn't it? Sure would! <laughs> So we came up, or at least we thought it was, so we came up with some stories and some some ideas and I decided, you know, if I was going to do this little comic, it was going to be just a side project and I wanted it to be fun, but I wanted to be experimental with the ink, I wanted it to be all ink, no screen tones, I don't want it to be 
an actual story like Dark Horse, the comic that I normally work on. I just wanted it to be like little fun, short scenarios, uh, kind of gory-esque. You know, I've, I've talked about Edward Gorey. I'm sure I'm making up that word. I just add add an ending on it, add a suffix to it, and you've got a new word. That's all you gotta do. <laughs> Lovecraftian, not a word. It is now. Gory-esque? Hey, why not, you know? <laughs> But yeah, I'm going to link an iCard up in the upper right hand corner that goes more into Edward Gorey. I, I, I've always really liked his artwork and I've always seen like a few snippets of his stories here and there and they're always really macabre and creepy and kind of dark. Yeah, I highly recommend him. Uh, if anyone's interested in that kind of macabre gothic theme, you know, he was highly influenced by Dracula. And like me, he really liked Lewis Carroll's The Artwork Within Alice in Wonderland. Um, he's seems like a very interesting person. He very much embodies that, that whole, I don't know if anyone out there has heard the, the term old weird America. That's what I think of. But then he seemed like such a normal guy. You know, you listen to him in the interviews and he's just a normal guy talking about poetry and you know, books and stories and things that influenced him, but he, I mean, he's really not like, he's not even British, like, I, I thought he was British, but it turns out, nope, he was born in Chicago, <laughs> but he, but he, I guess he moved all over the place, so we, we can't just, we can't claim it alone, you know, Illinois can't, <laughs> but I do love, I love his very dry, creepy, kind of ironic sense of humor, I don't know if I'm using ironic right, we, misuse that term all the time in, in everyday life but um yeah i just felt like it he very appropriately moved out east <laughs> later on in life and which makes sense you know considering where a lot of lovecraft stories take place you know out east on the on the coast but yeah he he's very interesting just an interesting guy so i definitely highly suggest you know looking into him if you like that that subject matter I figured I could learn a lot from him, so I've been trying to, you know, look at his work to pick up some new techniques. I've been trying to look at other influences as well, which aren't quite so noticeable. I mean, I, I enjoy the gorgeous woodcuts of Gustav Dorr. I grew up with my parents reading Coolidge's The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, and it, it was an illustrated copy that we had in those gorgeous woodprints. Now, I'm not anywhere near either of those artist levels, but these are the things that, are, that I'm pulling from and that I'm interested in for this series and I'm going to explore more later on. In addition to, you know, like some of the woodcuts from Hokusai, Utagawa, Kunimasa is another one, Totori Kiyonaga, and then uh, Utamaro. Those are other artists that I, I love the detail. I've never been as good as them, but those are some of the things that have been influencing me and that I plan on looking at. Also, I haven't really read much of it, but I keep flirting with the idea of actually sitting down and reading the New Yorker's um, Adams Family. Uh, Charles Adams was the artist. A lot of you already know the Adams Family, but the comic strip more so than you know the other forms of media that they were translated into later. Especially his washes. I've been trying to experiment a bit with the ink washes. I haven't really gotten to a level that I like yet, but these are things that I'm trying to pull from and are influencing me, and I figured it's appropriate to talk about since it's October and the end of the month we've got Halloween coming up so if you like that that kind of creepy macabre stuff but you also like a little bit of a quirky joke going along with it these are the things that are kind of influencing uh, wind or you know whimper in the dark and they are things that I I highly suggest I think they're they're fun to read like I said the more I get into the Adams family the more I like it I just kind of started skimming things over not too long ago and I'm like yeah this is actually kind of funny you know so um yeah go check it out you guys and hopefully if you're interested you'll check out whimper in the dark it's free yeah so this comic has been on hiatus for a year it's coming off of hiatus this Friday, October 11th of the year 2019. Some pages are very serious, others are kind of goofy, some of them are going to be creepy, some of them are just going to be silly, so it's just kind of a, a mishmash of that. It's going to update once a month, the second Friday of the month, and each month will be one complete arc or sub-arc. So that's the plan right now. Do you have a favorite macabre or horror artist? Artist? I can't 
enunciate anything today. For any artist that's dealing with creepy things, um, you know, Junji Ito, Gore, Edward Gorey, Charles Adams, to name a few. I, gosh, I guess Bosch would even fit in there a little bit, except for he was a painter. I'm sure he did some inking, you know, it was way back in the day. Eh, right? <laughs> Let me know down in the comments. Support links are all down there too, coffee, all that stuff. Links to the comics, references, affiliate links for the art supplies, music, you know, all that stuff's down there. If you like the video, like it, sub, do the bell thing, and as always, peace and love, fare you well, and keep on trucking.